Hi, I'm Dee Fairbanks Simpson from Birding with David Simpson. In this video, I'll discuss the correct codes to use when submitting to the Florida Breeding Bird Atlas. The first category we'll discuss is Observed. This category is usually used for a wide-ranging species such as raptors, vultures, and colonial wading birds like you see here. The presence of these species in an area does not necessarily indicate breeding in the block. Wide-ranging species such as these could travel miles from breeding locations several blocks away. Non-colonial wading birds such as green heron and the bitterns are not known to travel great distances. For these species, we use the higher codes when observed within the safe dates. Let's listen and see what these vultures are talking about. Hey, you want to go pick up girls tonight? <laughs> no, ESPN 800 is showing a repeat of mid-season football from two years ago. I'd rather watch that. Yeah, that does sound better. These birds are definitely not in the breeding mindset. Our next category is PO for possible. This includes the codes SH, which is suitable habitat. This is the most basic breeding evidence. It simply indicates that an adult bird was seen in the appropriate habitat within the safe dates. For songbirds and other birds not known to travel great distances, we use SH even if the bird was not literally in suitable habitat at the moment. It is assumed that the bird will use suitable habitat within the block at some point. SM, or singing male, is the next highest category. It indicates the presence of a singing male within the safe dates. Drumming in woodpeckers is considered singing for woodpeckers. Presence of a singing male in the same location on two occasions, seven or more days between, indicates T or territorial behavior, which is in the next category. The next category is PR, or evidence of probable breeding. The lowest code in this category is S, for seven singing males. This is sometimes referred to as a blockbusting code. It is designed to help atlasers quickly upgrade common species to the probable category without having to spend a lot of time looking for more detailed evidence. It is especially useful for areas you may only visit once. Some species that frequently use this code are Northern Mockingbird, Northern Cardinal, Common Yellowthroat, and Eastern Meadowlark. The former two will often show higher evidence during your visit, but the latter are often harder to confirm. Note that this code is often upgraded to T, Territorial, upon further visits. S is not recognized by all Atlas committees, so it's best to look for better evidence in order to be comparable to other states' Atlas projects. The next highest code is P, for pair in suitable habitat. This code is similar to SH, except that it involves a pair, male and female. This code is used quite often in doves, which often travel in pairs. The next highest code is T, for territory. This code is used when evidence of a permanent territory is observed. This can be as simple as finding a singing male in the same location on two occasions, a week or more apart. It can also involve males chasing other males from an area. Hey, you want a piece of me? You, you want, want you want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? No, you want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? No, you want a piece of me? The next highest code is C for courtship behavior or copulation. This can include pairs of birds engaging in courtship behavior such as cranes dancing, cowbirds displaying, blackbirds displaying, and so forth, or actual copulation. The next highest code is V for visiting a probable nest site. This code applies to such cases as wood ducks entering a cavity or swallows flying under a bridge such as you see here. It also applies to woodpeckers excavating a nest site or nest building in wrens. Male woodpeckers will excavate a cavity and then advertise to attract a mate. Wrens will sometimes build multiple nests, so NB, nest building, is not used for these species. Other codes in this category include A for agitated behavior. This includes agitated behavior or anxiety calls by adult birds. Owls snapping their bills and approaching people in response to playback of calls is an example of this code. This category also includes a little used code B for brood patch or cloacal protuberance. This code is mostly used by banders who have a bird in hand and can see this evidence up close. 
The last and largest category is CO for confirmed. The lowest code in this category is NB for nest building. This code was once N, the highest code under probable breeding, but has been upgraded to the lowest of the confirmed category. It indicates nest building in species other than wrens and woodpeckers. Care should be taken not to use this code for species such as crows, which may simply carry sticks or other material around for other purposes. The next highest code is DD for a distraction display. This is the classic broken wing display given by killdeer and some other ground nesting species. The parents must put themselves in harm's way for this code to apply. Birds attacking humans in the vicinity of the nest is considered to be DD. The next, rarely used code is NU for nest used. The nest must be identifiable to species, often by eggshells, and confirmed to have been used that year. Swallow nests under bridges are sometimes coded this way if they are discovered after the birds have left the colony. In the case of the nest shown here, the parent birds were seen on the nest, but it's not known if they laid eggs or actually fledged young. The next highest code, which is used only by banders, is FE for female with egg in the oviduct. The next more common code is FY for fledged young. This is one of the more commonly used codes, especially later in the nesting season. Fledged young are still dependent upon their parents for food and protection. For some species, such as gulls and terns, we do not use this code as the young could fly many miles and still beg from their parents. Likewise for swallows. Colonial wading birds will often leave the nest while still relatively unable to fly. We call these birds branchers and code them as NY, nest with young. FY is not used for colonial waders. The next highest code is CF for carrying food. This is another commonly used code. Care should be taken to assure that the adults are carrying food to young and not for their own consumption. Raptors and crows will often carry food about for their own consumption. The next highest code is ON for occupied nest. This code is used when the contents of a nest are not determined but the nest appears to be occupied. It is often used for raptor nests, which are too high to see well, or cavity nesters such as flycatchers or parrots. Swallows continually flying under a bridge where closer inspection is not possible can be coded as such. The next highest code is FS for adult carrying a fecal sac. Many young birds poop in little sacs which the parents carry away from the nest site. The sacs are small and usually white as shown here. This code was once lumped together with CF for carrying food. Mm, the next highest code is IP for incubating position. This includes adults seen on a nest in incubating or brooding position where the contents of the nest cannot be determined. This code was once part of ON or occupied nest. The penultimate code is NE for nest with eggs. Nest with eggs must have an identified species either by the eggs themselves or by the adults in attendance. Cowbird eggs found in a nest confirm both the host and the parasite species. The highest code is NY for nest with young. The nest with the young must have an identified species. Young cowbirds indicate confirmed breeding for both the host and the parasite species. If you would like to know more about the Breeding Bird Atlas Project, visit birdingwithdavidsimpson.com. Thank you for watching.